We're so glad that you're with us today. And now is a great time for each of you to take a moment, if you are on Facebook or YouTube, to like us and share us so that all of your friends might have access to our service and to know about Unity in Greensboro and what a wonderful, loving community we are. I'd like to take a moment to diverge from the script here um, as president of our board and as a very involved person yesterday in our craft fair and yard sale to thank everyone for every bit of service you provided to make such a success of the yard sale and the craft fair. And um, it's much appreciated and, and bless each one, every one of you. Everybody probably took a nap yesterday afternoon, but that's okay. <laughs> now we're gonna take a moment for everyone to unmute on Zoom and say hello to each other. If you would do that, feel free. Hi, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The hello from Madison, North Carolina. Good morning. Good morning. It was so good to see so many people yesterday and actually physically touch you and <laughs> give hugs. It was great. <laughs> yes, it was. Was. Good morning, ARP. <laughs> and Kersey, I, Kersey, I love that um, picture you got up there. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Kersey, I. <laughs> All righty. At this time, uh, I would like for everyone to join me with reading uh, the two affirmations that will be on the screen for you to have access to and read with me. God's power is my power and I use it wisely. God's power is my power and I use it wisely. Faith opens doors where my human mind sees no doors. Faith opens doors where my human mind sees no doors. And now we'll have a call to worship song performed by Maria Mata. Good morning, everyone. It's so great to be back. I'm sorry I missed all the hugs and uh, touches and love yesterday. Uh, but it's good to be here today. Um, as I was practicing this song, it, it, uh, when I first heard it, it seemed a little redundant to me, but just the feeling that you get within, we am going to get emotional talking about, the feeling that you get within by saying these words over and over. So I want you to take the time as you sing it with me, muted, obviously, um, to just Feel your heart. Notice what you're feeling as you repeat these words. So, Chris, I'm hoping you're going to put the words up on the screen. So, I'm so grateful by Karen Drucker. Gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude for me. 
gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude ahead of me, gratitude all around me. Thank you, Maria. And, and I felt the love and the gratefulness within myself. Thank you for sharing that with us. And now I'd like for everyone to join in our vision, mission, and core values statements. And they are on screen for us. If you're all muted, please join in. We envision a spiritually Wake, awakened world where all people live in joyful gratitude, which ties in so strongly with the song we just heard. Our mission statement is unity in Greensboro is a beacon of light for those seeking a positive path for spiritual living through prayer, meditation, education, celebration, and service. And our core values include spiritual growth, generosity, inclusivity, authenticity, wholeness, and unity. <laughs> and that was my phone, excuse me. And I, as the prayer chaplain on duty today, oh, I'm not the prayer chaplain, go ahead. Shandrika, excuse me. I know you're fine. <laughs> Ms. Shandrika, I'm the prayer chaplain on duty today. No matter what you're going through or going through, we are honored to pray with you. To be in, we want you to also be included in our prayer list. So if you want to um, go to our website on the URG website and put in requests for a prayer, or you can also find it on our weekly newsletter or email us at prayerfromuig at gmail.com. Now I invite you to think of a loved one or someone um, that you would love to play for on today. We also have people that we would like for you to pray for and connect with us on praying for as well. And that's Miss Maria, Barry, Charlotte, Charlotte and Charlotte's family, Jim and his family, Patricia, Patricia, both of the Patricias. So as we pray together right now, if you would just bow your heads and close your eyes and begin to think about those loved ones and anybody that I have missed, I'm sorry. And we will begin to pray for you. So God, we thank you God for allowing everyone that needs your attention, everyone that needs your love, everyone that needs that care from you, God. We trust that you already done it, Father God. We know that it's already done. We have faith, God, through spirit, through your love, through the peace that we have from you, that it's all done, and so it is. Thank you, Chandrika. I'd like to add to that list, uh, Virginia Bouvier, who lost her uh, brother recently, and it's her last sibling, uh, remaining sibling. So we add her to that list. And as a worship assistant today, on Wednesday, May 12th and 16th, they are open for any activity that uh, someone would like to um, provide. Um, just let Bill, Mia know 
and then it can be conveyed and established. I don't know all the different details about that, but it's easy as pie. And our oneness blessing meditation will be on Wednesday, May 5th, this coming week at 6.15. And if you'd like a copy of the book we're using to make our dreams come true, How to Live in the Circle of Prayer and Make Your Dreams Come True by Stella Terrell Mann is available in a digital copy, copy at no cost. Uh, just contact um, the media email address and it will be sent to you. That's what I did. And we can also send you a hard copy of the book for $10. And just email media team uig at gmail for a copy of the book uig is a fast has a fast easy and secure way to tithe one way is to text give to 336 600 1064 and follow the prompts and that uh, can be done electronically and there's also a donate link on the UIG website or Facebook page or by mailing a check to our address at 512 South Mendenhall Street, Pittsburgh, North Carolina, 27403. It's 501. 501. 501. That's right. It's on the corner. Okay. Thank you. Um, Next, we're going to have very special music from Elaine Penn. We're so glad to have her with us today and every chance she has to be with us. She grew up as a singer in her family's jazz standards band, and I think her family's with us today. She has been performing professionally for most of her life. Through music, her parents taught her and her three sisters about the power of family, love and following your dreams. Currently, Elaine is a motivational speaker, executive coach, retreat leader and performer who inspires and empowers people to reach their highest potential. Her specialty is living and manifesting your dreams through your unique gifts, building powerful teams and inspired leadership. She has performed and spoken in numerous unity churches around the United States. Elaine is a member of the UIG family who co-directed our music program for 10 years and continues to share her musical inspirations with us. Let's join together to welcome Elaine with us this morning. Thanks, Pat. It's so great to be with you guys. I'm so excited to be here. Um, this is a song and it kind of goes along with everything we've heard this morning. It's about the power of God being within us. Maria Mutt, when I heard you singing earlier, I was weeping, just so you know. I was just crying and crying and crying. Um, I'm so glad to be a part of this beautiful spiritual community still after all these years. This is a song I wrote. It's about God uh, being within us and it's called Spirit in Us. Peace so divine, loving and kind, shelter when I am cold. You are my source, my heart is yours. Love of my soul, my heart overflows. My heart overflows Spirit in silence Love above all loves Blessed Creator The one that we trust You are the Christ light 
You are my whole life. You are my maker, and you are enough. Spirit in us. You're what I feel. Love that is real You are the air I breathe We're all a part Of your perfect heart Eternally Now we are free Now we are free, spirit inside us, love above all loves, blessed creator, the one that we trust. You are the Christ light, you are my whole life, you are my maker and you are enough. Spirit in us. Y'all sing with me, come on. Spirit inside us, love above all loves, blessed creator, the one that we trust. You are the Christ light, you are my whole life, you are my maker, and you are enough. Spirit in us Thank you so much, Elaine. That was beautiful. Just nice and relaxing to the soul and uplifting and everything beautiful. Thank you. So um, I, I want to start before uh, I get into the lesson. I, I do want to do some some thanks myself for yesterday. You know, a lot of work leading up to it went up. And, I, you know, I started out um, a while back uh, reaching out to Barbara and asking her if I, if she would help with the organizing of emails coming in and that part. And I didn't know when I was asking Barbara to get involved, I was tapping into our yard sale guru uh, who was gonna go collect all this stuff. And I mean, if you notice right in front of the parking lot, there was a big sign right there. She created those and, and put them up in various places. And she did an awful lot of work leading up to getting us to then all the amazing work that so many others did yesterday. And of course, Mia and Miranda helped us with a lot of, of the, uh, the technical end of getting it in all the computer spaces and all that as well. And, and then all the hard work of everyone yesterday too. Um, Barbara, I know you counted the money. Do you remember the amount that, that the church made yesterday off of that? The total was $1,026 six dollars and some odd change awesome thank you and and that was a combination of the donations from all of you and so many other people for the big giant yard sale area we had on the back of the parking lot but also uh we opened up space for vendors to set up and we didn't charge anyone any vendor fees we just asked that they consider giving a love offering and i know 200 and some dollars was from that 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 the church got but that means that that we opened up the space for people to make some money for themselves. I know the the paleo love table told me that this was the best she had done at an event since the pandemic started a year ago. So um, 
the plan is to do another holiday one uh, the first Saturday in December is what we have penciled in. So anyway, we just wanted to thank everybody for that. And, uh, and then I want you to know um, that welcome song that Catherine started us off on. Hopefully we'll get the technical ends worked out of that. And you'll hear it clearer next week. But when I, uh, I emailed her to ask her if she would do the song for this month, just pick an upbeat song in the three minute range is what I ask everybody. And, um, and she came back with a brand new song that she wrote, especially for this. So uh, we got an original piece written for us as a welcome song. So I wanted to make sure you all knew that. And then of course, the call to worship song we're doing this month is a song this church knows well and, and has choreography to, and has done it with playing the Karen Drucker CD. But I reached out to Tal and asked him if he would record a track so that our singers could sing the song. So I wanted you all to know how many different people, you know, from our group are all involved in all that, you know, that you don't necessarily see, but are all involved in what we're doing here on Sunday. So, um, okay, let's take a moment to, uh, to get into your comfortable prayer position, whatever that is for you. Uh, for me, I like to place both of my feet firmly on the ground to center myself and ground myself, close my eyes, and just release. Take a deep breath in. And relax into the moment. Letting go of all the things that I celebrate or, or not. Anything that's happened before this moment so that I can truly release myself into the spirit of God who is within me. And in that place, I just give thanks. I say, thank you, God. Thank you for all that we do together in partnership. Thank you for all that you do to me and through me. Thank you for all these people that gather together in like-mindedness so that we can share the joys of, of what we know works well in our lives. Thank you, God. And so it is, and amen. So um, today's lesson is called Mustard Seeds All Around Us. And so before I get to the obvious Bible verse on that for us to look at, uh, I wanted to start with one in, in Hebrews 11.6, which says, this is the traditional language, and then we'll talk the new thought on the other end. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seeks him. So first, obviously, use whatever pronouns or non-pronouns you like, you know, the he, the she, the it, the whatever word works for you, say that. And, um, but what, and, and this isn't, it's not really talking about, see, the old thought is, oh, well, you gotta go be nice to grandpa, you know, the old white man sitting on the cloud who determines whether you're good or bad you know, in order to get the, you know, the rewards, right? But what we know in New Thought is that I am one with God. Not just me, all of us. That's, that's our, you know, our solid affirmation that has helped me so much in the last 20 years of my life. I am one with God. I am one with all people. I am one with all life. I am one with the one because there is only one. So what, what I'm, what is being said here is that when you draw near to God who is within you, when you're drawing near to that truly positive, loving, like the divine love, the divine creator of everything good in your life, when you draw near to that within your own consciousness, within your own self, that that is when you can start finding the good. That's when you can truly see good where you maybe weren't able to see it before. That's where you can truly let go of the needs because you now know the needs are taken care of. You can see it more clearly because you took that time to draw near to God. It didn't require a ladder or a helicopter to get you to a certain cloud level. You just had to get quiet. And, uh, you know, the way I speak to myself, it, it'd be rude to say it to you all, but what I say to myself is shut up and get quiet, just shut up, you know? 
at this part more than this because this I close up and then this get, goes into high. It's like, oh, well, if he's not talking now, I can think even more. And so that's where the breaths take place and where you focus in on the releasing of whatever you're thinking of to get to that place so that you do draw near. And when you draw near within, that's when the gifts open up. And here's the thing, that's when you find out they didn't get newly delivered. This wasn't contacting Amazon and getting it at your door the next day. This was getting yourself quiet so that you could suddenly see what you were unable to see while you were focused in on not having or, or on whatever was surrounding you that you didn't enjoy. And when you released that, suddenly we can see what is already there for us. So let's talk the famous verse about mustard seeds, right? So it, it, the famous verse, of course, is I should have just highlighted right from, from that little piece of it. Um, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. That's Matthew 17, verse 20. But that's attached to a larger story. So in Matthew 17, 14 through 20, it's talking about that a father comes to Jesus and says, my, my boy is possessed with demons. I'm gonna grab a drink. Dry this morning. Um, so, and he's like, and I went to your disciples and they couldn't heal him. So Jesus's response to them immediately was, you unbelieving and perverse generation. Well, that sounds awful and mean, right? But, but what we're saying is, I, I mean, I'm like, well, I, you know, in what I think of as perverse in our modern day connotation of that word, I don't think Jesus was starting to name call his disciples. It's just meaning looking at the negative side of things, right? And, and in saying the you unbelieving, it's he's saying you weren't able to do it because you, you still are allowing doubt to be a part of the process. You're still sitting down saying, hope I can do this instead of knowing for sure that you can, right? And so that's when, and, and then Jesus went about healing the little boy, which we all know uh, a healing can only happen if the person being healed, it, that's the real healer, is the, is the person that's saying yes to a healing, right? You know, we have uh, people in this congregation who do healing work of, of many different facets, but what, but what really happens is, you talk to the client or the person you're helping, right? Until they're able to release, right? You can't make them, you can't, you definitely can't force them. I mean, it's not holding in their hand where you can just pry open their fingers and let it go. It's in here, which has a way tighter grip than this, right? So the healing took place and the famous verse happened in a private conversation when the disciples came to Jesus and said, I don't understand why you you taught us how to do this but we couldn't do it why can't we do it and his answer was because you weren't using your faith right because if you're using your faith you can re literally tell a mountain to pick up and move and it will do it now obviously in modern day conversation we're like i mean clearly none of us can pick up a mountain and move it but that's if you're literally thinking of physically picking it up, right? There's a lot of ways to move a mountain. It's all about perspective, right? You start walking the around, suddenly you get to the other side of it, or you go right on up it, you get to the top of the mountain, you can't even see a mountain anymore, right? There are a lot of ways of moving a mountain. But what he was ultimately talking about was you focused in on the mountain instead of the faith. And so here is where I... um in parables, which are a little earlier. So this gives perspective of why he could just say this one part to them and they should know what he's talking about because this was in chapter 17. In chapter 13 of Matthew, in verses 31 and 32, Jesus gives the parables of the mustard seed and the yeast. He told them another parable, it says. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field, Though it is the smallest of all seeds, 
Yet, when it grows, it is the largest of gardens, plants, and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. So the yeast, of course, is a rising agent. And the mustard seed becomes the smallest of all seeds that can become a tree that birds can fly and sit in that, is, that can be higher than us, right? So what we're... What, we're ultimately getting in a message here is if you will focus in on the mustard seed, if you will focus your thoughts on that little inkling of faith, it can grow into what can overtake everything. That, that because what we learn is it's all right. It's all non-physical before it comes physical, right? Non-physical meaning energy. So when we give our thought to it, we are literally fertilizing it. And so if you give your thought to that inkling of the faith that may just be the glimmer of light in what is otherwise darkness, when you focus in on the light, you can start seeing more of the light. How many of you have ever gone from a bright space outside and you walk into a completely dark room, the door shut behind you, you can't see a thing because you were just in this bright space. But when you stand there long enough, suddenly some tiny little light source somewhere in the room will, will suddenly become enough that you can see because your eyes have to adjust. Your perspective has to change. And so if you're in a place of saying, well, this can't be done because, stop listening right there. Don't let the because get in there and plant some seeds for you, right? say, let me figure out a way that this can be done. Let me look for the inkling of what can grow. Let me find the mustard seed in this situation. So that's why I said in the title of it, mustard seeds are all around us, because in whatever situation we have, if you focus in, you get the choice. What you give your attention to gives, your, gives its attention back to you. And that's what you then surround yourself with, right? So I had a friend that, that uh, reached out to me recently and she, she wants some, some new thought ministers. She's friends with many to do a podcast where we have the hard conversations about that she thinks that new thought doesn't often attack and, and really deal with. And, um, and when I asked her what she was talking about as an example, she had had a childhood friend or a high school friend, um, and she's way past that age now, right? Who as she had learned had, had passed away from complications from COVID. And she was heartbroken about this moment. And she felt cheated from God because she had not been made aware that this friend even had COVID, much less was gonna you know, die from it in advance. So she had not had an opportunity, not even just not to go see the friend, but she, she felt she had been cheated out of the opportunity to pray help into that friend. And, and so, you know what, I, I, the conversation, we had a longer conversation, but part of what came up from that was, look, when, when we all gather together in prayer, we talked about that before, when, where there are two or three, once we start adding that, we can create some extra power and really help uplift someone in something that they're going through. But she wasn't invited to be a part of that. So I'm like, you know, um, you, you, you know, it wasn't, well, ultimately what I said to her was, it wasn't your business, apparently. You weren't invited to that party and now you're upset about it. And, and I'm like, but get your own lessons from within there. I'm like, look, <clears throat> prayer can change things, but your thought alone, if, if your friend was on this journey that this is where your friend was going to go, you couldn't reverse it from your own end. If that would happen, people would be dropping dead from other people's thoughts every day, everywhere, right? You get me saying, well, you just drop dead. You know, it's like, so it's like, so our thoughts alone can't live or kill someone, right? Um, but it's like, the question that came up for me in that was, because I knew she had done new thought studies, I said, if you believe that you were one with God, 
then that means that you were a part of the energy that you energetically, that you in your oneness mind did know about all of it. And so what if from the oneness perspective, you did exactly what you needed to do for your friend within the human experience, and that was to stay out of the way. So sometimes we're called to come get right up in there and hold the hand and be with them. And other times we're called to stay out of the way because they're getting ready to go on a journey that you may fight them on, right? I came to uh, the thought from that conversation as well that I was with my, my mom. My mom had helped write her obit and she specifically made sure to write that she passed with family around her. So I was clear on what she wanted, right? And, and she had hospice care. So we all knew what was happening. And I was all night long, right up in the bed with her. And then some friends came in the next morning. And I said, let me go grab a shower. And while I was in the shower, she passed away. Now I could have the moment of feeling crushed that I knew because she had me right in her obituary. She was surrounded by her family and I wasn't there. And I could get, I could get held up in that. I, I could work on that for years, right? I, I, that's, that's foundation to be miserable for the rest of my life if I want it to be. But as I was talking to someone an hour after her passing, I immediately flashed to a memory of the first day of second grade. And I'm the little seven-year-old who is having the crying, bawling meltdown mom's not leaving without me. She's either going to stay here with me or we're both going to go, right? And the teacher distracted me with something. I don't remember what that something was. But while I was distracted, she slipped away because she couldn't look me in the face and walk away while I was crying. But while I was distracted and, and was happy, she slipped away. And I immediately got the message that no matter what she had said when we wrote the obit, that as long as I laid up there in that bed, I was stopping her from the next step in her journey. That I, I had to get distracted so she could go do what she needed to do next. So within that becomes like the faith, that takes faith in knowing that, right? Because we didn't have an out loud conversation about it. So there, there it takes faith in knowing the truth and in knowing and what, and, uh, what Abraham Hicks has helped me on giving a great example of saying that uh, the mourning is about, and the sadness is about not being able to have the conversation with someone the way you used to, but you can release that once you're able to realize that you can speak to them where they are now versus where they used to be. So um, all that is to say that it's all in our perspective. And when we give our attention to it, that's what we then surround ourselves with. We can surround ourselves in misery of that didn't go like I wanted it to, or we can just wrap ourselves in the comfort of the truth. But that truth is unseen, right? Faith is hope but, uh, for that that is still not seen. So, but to put faith in action, you then have to start believing and seeing the reality of what is still not seen. That's when we use faith as a, a tool. Um, the, and well, actually one other thing I wanna say, and y'all gonna have to let me know if I go long cause I thought I hit the timer and I didn't. So we're, we're flying blind here today. Um, but uh, just one other, like when we do the prayer list and we've added the prayer list that we do just before we get to the lesson, we uh, have ch purposely chosen not to name what the challenges are. We're not keeping secrets from anyone. What we're doing is asking everyone to see the wholeness and the perfection of everyone right where they are. And if we start listing out to you every challenge that every person is having, then we're not, we're inviting you now to think about the cancer and the heart attacks and the stumped toe, the whatever, and it's like, no, what we're asking is here are some people that need us to come together in that two or three or more and see the truth of their being, see the whole per perfect person that they are. And so, you know, that's what we're doing. If some of you at some point just really need to know what the bad is, we, you can find that out in some way or another. But within this spiritual thing, that's why we've chosen to say, here are the people that we are praying for and with. 
and and so that we're focused in on the on that one speck of light in the dark room or we're focused in on that one mustard seed si size faith right now in that moment here's the last piece i wanted to uh read this quote that actually came up as a facebook memory that i had posted back in 2011 and uh it's a quote from martin luther king jr that says i mourn the loss of thousands of precious lives but i will not rejoice in the death of one not even an enemy returning hate for hate multiplies hate adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars darkness cannot drive out darkness only light can do that hate cannot drive out hate only love can do that so what this whole lesson is about is if you feel you are in a dark room, look for the speck of light it, that may be as tiny as a mustard seed. It is there. Guaranteed, there's always going to be a speck of light because you're there and you're the light of the world. So you're if you're the only person in the room, there's light there. Wherever you are, there is light. So you can never be anywhere where you're like, well, I looked for the light and there was no light. That's only because you refused to see it because you are the light of the world. And when you focus in on that light, it will grow and grow until it becomes a tree size that the birds can sit on. I love you. I bless you. I behold the Christ in you. Go, uh, go have some mustard on something for lunch. <laughs> Take care. And, uh, and now we uh, now is our time for giving. I was about to throw it straight to Elaine and get to some music, but uh, now is the time to to give uh, to our church as we continue moving forward and continue uh, to work on preparations of of getting back in person. I still don't know exactly when that will be. It's probably at least a month, month and a half out, um, maybe two months. But we're working on it. And it, uh, what I can tell you is it's going to require spending some extra money for extra cleaning supplies and extra stuff. So as we move forward, um, we, we will continue giving. And I invite you to do some of that right now. And uh, whatever you're able to give and, and the buttons you can click on on our website and Facebook and or mailing your checks or sending the text, I invite you to think of that now place your hands on your heart or on your gift if you have it and let's say this prayer together divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that i have all that i give and all that i receive and i am grateful and now i am grateful to uh throw it back to elaine finn for some beautiful music Gosh, Wally, you are like one freaking great minister. I love listening to you, and it uh, ins inspires my heart. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure everybody feels the same way. Uh, there's so many great little nuggets you gave us today, uh, but one of the best ones that, I, that I'm that i taking with me is when we come together. Two or three are, are gathered in my name. There's more. There's love. Uh, there, is, there is more God. So that's what this song is about. It's about, gosh, y'all, uh, if we pull it all together, you know, it, you, you guys did it yesterday with your with your craft fair, and um, and we're doing it with our church services, and let's just keep pulling it together, and knowing that when we pull it together and put our hearts together, then and and put God in the center of it, uh, there's nothing we can't do. So this is called "I Lift My Heart," and you know what? Sing with me, please. That's what I miss most about being in person with you guys is singing together. Most of you know this song. It's I lift my heart to you, the Christ within, the source of all I do, the divine I am. I lift my heart to you. It's not very hard. You can do it. Sing with me. I love you. Please sing with me. Here we go. All right, here we go, y'all. I lift my heart to you, the Christ within, the source of all I do, the divine I am. 
I lift my heart to you. Let's sing out loud. Come on. I lift my heart to you, the Christ within, the source of all I do, the divine I am. I lift my heart to you to you. Now is the time that we lift up our hearts and actually thank God for allowing us to be able to give love offering. So right now we begin to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for the opportunity, God, for allowing us to be able to give and receive, God, and share that love that you share with us each and every day. So my prayer to you, O oh God, is to continue to bless us, continue to strengthen us, continue to spread that love through us, around us, and for us. And so it is. Thank you, God. And so it is. And thank you all for being here today. I, I do want to remind you this Wednesday, there will be the oneness blessing that you can be a part of. That's on our 617 Zoom number. You don't know that whole number and neither do I, but it's posted at the top of our Facebook page and it's on the e-blast as well. And, uh, and then next Sunday is Mother's Day. And so, um, uh, you know, the easier, the, the more readily thought words to put together is mother's love and mother's, but it's also the month of power. And I think that celebrating mothers in the same month that you celebrate power, uh, there's nothing that could be more accurate. So I've titled next week's uh, lesson, Mother Power. And, uh, and so uh, my sister from another Mr. Kim Yarbrough will be here singing with us. And I hope you'll all join us for that as well. And um, right now I invite you to go out into today and into this next week and, uh, and just look for, for glimmers that you can fertilize with, with your own thought of creating more good in your own life, world and affairs. And, uh, and if you wish to stay on here on Zoom afterwards, we'll have a conversation, which Linda Dunn from our adult ed team will lead a conversation. So uh, thank you. And let all, let's all say together our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. 
I love you. I bless you. I behold the Christ in you. We'll say goodbye to YouTube and Facebook now. We're going to unmute Zoom so everyone can chit chat and, and have, conversate for a few minutes, and then we'll go into the other conversation. <laughs>